Hey, I have a question for you today. Did you ever see a cat playing a piano? Hmm? A cat playing the guitar? A cat playing the drums? Or a cat playing a fiddle? Well, did you ever see a cow playing the piano? Or a cow shopping at Park City? <laughs> or a cow jumping over the moon? Hmm. Did you ever see a spoon and a dish running through New Holland? Well, of course not. But you know what? That's what makes this rhyme so funny. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon, the little dog laughed to see such a sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. <laughs> now, this traditional rhyme dates back to the 18th century England. The first known version of this song was published in 1765 under the title, Hi, Diddle Diddle. Now, we're not even sure what a diddle is. The expression, hey, diddle diddle, was found in some Shakespeare's works, and there is a connection of it with the saying, hey, nanny, no, which is used in some other old English folk songs. Well, whatever diddle means, we do enjoy the lyrics of this rhyme, hey, diddle diddle. As we can imagine, a cat playing a fiddle, a cow jumping over the moon, and a dish running with a spoon. And when we imagine animals or objects like spoons and dishes doing human things, um, this is what we call anthropomorphism, which means that we are applying human traits and emotions and intentions to non-human things like a dish or a plate or a cow or a cat. Anthropomorphism. Can you say that with me? Anthropomorphism. Excellent. Now, did you know that God is not a human being? Oh, he's so much more than a human. Oh, God is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-being. Wow, it's even hard to describe what God is because we can only think in human terms. However, we do know that God became a man or a human, just like us. And it was in Jesus that he took on the likeness of God. In Philippians chapter 2, we read, Jesus, in his very nature, was God. He was equal with God. But Jesus made himself nothing. And he did by this by taking on the nature of a servant. He was made just like human beings. And he appeared as a man. We call this God incarnate, or the incarnation. God becoming flesh. You know, in Matthew 1, verse 22 and 23, there's the prophecy that was found before um, Jesus was born. And all of this took place to bring about what the Lord had said would happen. He had said through the prophet, the virgin is going to have a baby, and she will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us. God with us, Emmanuel, the incarnation, God becoming flesh. Some other verses that prove this to us are found in John chapter 1. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only is God. That's Jesus. Jesus is God and is at the Father's side. The one at the Father's side has shown us what God is like. And in Colossians 1, Jesus the Son is the exact likeness of God who can't be seen. So Jesus came so that we would be able to understand God's love for us and so that we could approach God and have a relationship with him. In John 1:14, it says the word Jesus became a human being and he made his home with us. We have seen his glory. It is the glory of the one and only who came from the Father. And Jesus is full of grace and truth. And in 1 Timothy 3, there is no doubt that true godliness comes from this great mystery. Jesus came as a human being, God incarnate. The Holy Spirit proved that he was the Son of God. He was seen by angels. He was preached among the nations, and people in the world believed in him, and he was taken up into glory. Now, I may never see a cat play a fiddle or a cow jump over the moon or a dish running with a spoon. But who knows? I do know that God loves me and God loves you. And Jesus has come so that we all 
can see God. Well, you can hi diddle diddle or hey diddle diddle all you want today, but do know that God loves you and God loves me. And I wish for you, because of that, a day filled with joy and a day filled with peace.